Here we go. We are back in Cambridge, Massachusetts at Pandemonium Books and Games for the Regional Netrunner Tournament Elimination Round. This is game number 16. If you take out your cut to 16 uh, official Netrunner Fantasy Flight tournament bracket and look for game 16 this is on the left seven seed rob playing kit versus number two seed chris playing personal evolution you've seen chris play a lot and usually when uh you know you see him he's playing against me so what ends up happening is i end up you know uh talking from the perspective of the runner not getting killed it might be hard to do that but i'm going to try to discuss this game from the point of chris Trying to kill that horrible runner over there. Grr, kit. Die. Um, Rob has, you're probably wondering already, what is that thing Rob has? He basically made this click counter on his own that uh, works with a foot pedal. <laughs> on the one hand, it's really cool. On the other hand, if you bring that out, it's sort of like, really, dude? <laughs> um, so, you know, I sort of have positive and negative feelings about it. Anyway. Still really, you know, it's awesome than a lot of other click counters. All right, so the game started off a uh, runner, pretty basic opening with a workshop and a sure gamble. Uh, Chris, he ices up R&D, because that's really the weakness of his deck, uh, is if you can pull the agendas from R&D. And he always likes to install Gilahan's House of Knives right away, the start of the game, if possible, right? Because very rarely will the runner be brave enough to just run that straight out of the gate on turn one. And if Chris scores either one of those, uh, the, the abilities that they grant, Gilahans, you'll see him hit that a bunch of times this game. Really carries him through uh, House of Knives as well. So he's really just trying to set up a situation where the runner can die. So uh, Rob here, Kit, gets a Deus Ex straight away. He knows the score. Deus Ex is the way to not die. So Chris is going to be aiming to get rid of that Deus Ex. Force, you know, hit him with something that'll force him to use the Deus Ex. So then, you know, he'll, he'll be forced to dig for clone ships or other sorts of recursion before he can run without dying. If he's in a situation where he can't run without dying, you know, it's like, do you try to score agendas? Because the guy will be too afraid to run because he knows without a Deus Ex he shouldn't run. Well, here he runs with his Deus Ex. He has a Deus Ex, so there's no fear. There's a snare, fine, he gets the tag. He's got a few clicks remaining, so he's gonna that hit that Procon and remove the tag. That Procon really helps against Jinteki a lot because you're gonna be drawing uh, a ton anyway. So you may as well get credit credits while you draw. That allows you to sort of recover more quickly uh, to be able to run again. But credits, you know, as long as you have enough credits to get your Deus Ex back, um, you don't really need a lot of credits when it's some sort of iceless shell game Jinteki, right? Well, it's not iceless. It's just very, very low ice. And your kit, so ice don't really scare you once you have a decoder. Ooh, a psychic field, and the Deus Ex is in the trash with no way to get it back. So Rob is showing no fear of checking all the remotes. Um, and they're playing the side game. Is he going to win this one? He's going to lose his whole hand. Oh, he loses his whole hand. He has to. The runner has to match. Uh, two indexing a data sucker. That's big. Well, he's got a data sucker on the table, but those indexings were basically essential. Um, I hope he has the same old thing or another indexing, because you really need those to score points safely uh, and to dig deep. I mean, if I was holding indexing, I would hold off on running the remotes um, so that I could use them, right? Anyway. Yeah, so in the early game, you know, when Chris is facing an opponent he hasn't faced before, he's trying to figure out whether this is someone who's going to run remotes or not. And then you behave accordingly, right? Figure out what this person's going to do. Are they going to run everything you install? Are they going to run some things? When are they going to run something? When are they not going to run something? And based on that, you know, uh, install the correct traps and or agendas, uh, you know, to, to get them to do what you want. So... After he scored that Gilahans in turn one, right, Rob has shown he's going to run pretty much anything that's installed, even on advanced. So he's going to continue to install the Psychic Field, a Snare, a Shiq, one of each um, unadvanceable trap, one after the other. Rob has run all of them. 
So why not install more if he's going to keep doing that? Uh, figuring out what to set the sheet Q at here. You don't want to set the sheet Q at kill level. Uh, I think it's, you know, because then you're, you're basically guaranteeing it to be a negative point. Right? He spent two, which is one less uh, than the number of cards in his hand. So you, you're saving credits as the corp. Uh, and this Jinteki needs a lot of credits. You basically need to always have four credits to threaten snare. You need lots of you need money to advance things if you need to. You know, lots of money is needed. See, install Gila hands. He's, he needs monies. The only thing the runner can really do with money uh, is install Deus Ex again or vamp. If you have vamp, you can do a lot of damage to this Jinteki by taking all their money and then running every remote. Right? If they have if no money at all, zero credits. All the remotes are suddenly safe, except for, I guess, Shock. Big deal, right? If it's Psychic Field, you're going to win that side game by spending zero. If it's Snare, they can't set it off. If it's Cerebral Overrider, they can't set it off. If it's Junebug, they can't set it off. That's pretty much the only weapon you have is Vamp and run all the remotes. Without that, you know, money's not really going to help you. The Ice aren't going to stop you if you even have a basic runner deck. And that's the thing, right? is that your runner deck is mostly cards that are there to break ice. He's got a few token ice to force you to spend time on that. But you're going to beat the ice. It's Puppy, Gura, and Eli. That's pretty much it. Uh, if you can't beat those three ice, you're not you're not doing too well. Um, to be, You're not going to beat anyone else, let alone Jinteki, right? You need to do something about these remotes. So... He stopped running the remotes for a bit, and now there's too many of them, which can get quite scary. So he's Kit, so he's going to bring out his Yogg, um, and maybe start going for the centrals. Oh, so he just he ran R&D. It's a Yagura, so then he brings out the Yogg after seeing the ice. Uh, I guess it could have theoretically been something stronger than three, right? And the Data Sucker also comes out of the workshop. So he's going to get in for free get his data sucker token x as one card from r&d okay no reason to not do that once every turn um i'm afraid i'm surprised he did that though without a deus ex on the table and he had a clone ship in hand so he's putting the clone ship in the workshop uh should be able to use that to get a deus ex again well once you've done uh okay Oof, you got a Gila Hands, that's good. Only one net damage. But if that had been a snare or a psychic field, it would have been too late for him to get his Deus Ex uh, with Workshop Clone Ship. I'd get it before running. Alright, so Chris is looking to set up a kill somehow. Right? Uh, Kit does not have the Deus Ex out, even though he could get it out at any time. So, Mushin no Shin. Right? You must, you know, it's sort of a threat. You must do this now. I'm a triple advanced something. Are you going to run it this turn or not? That's probably the only chance you will get. It could be a three point agenda for all you know. He runs it without the Deus Ex. Cerebral Overrider. Boom. Yeah, he stopped running things that were unadvanced. Those two unadvanced cards are still chilling out. Uh, but. Then it's like, okay, you're not going to run things that are unadvanced anymore because I taught, you know, you got punished three times doing that. Well, he ran the unadvanced Gila Hands and picked it up. Um, let's see if you'll run something that's advanced. Well, we'll put a Cerebral. <laughs> that's It's a great test. <laughs> he thought it was going to be Junebug. He's like, no, it's like Junebug, but much worse. <laughs> so max hand size of two for the runner. How do you get the kill? Um from the Jinteki side? Well, there's a few ways. Luck, have three Neural EMPs in your hand. I don't even know if he has three Neural EMPs in the deck. Uh, a Scorched Earth will do it. You saw a Plaskrete got hosed earlier in the game. Um, runner's usually not expecting a Scorch anyway uh, at a Jinteki. And you have to, the only way to get the tag is off a of Snare, last click Snare. Uh, or a Ronin. A Ronin will kill him off. If you can get a Ronin advance to four, it's going to be game over if there's no Deus Ex out. Okay, so something weird happened there while I was talking about how to get the kill. That is, um, Jinteki installed an ice in front of the Yagura, which was dumb because there was a Yag on the table, so Yagura is worthless. He should have thrown the Yagura away and saved a credit. But then, uh, the parasite that was in the workshop was the only thing left in there, so it had to be installed. The Yagura was the only thing on the board, so. Sadly, he had to Yagura, he had to parasite the Yagura, which was a waste of a parasite because he would have rather used it on something like, say, that Eli, which is not as easily yagable. 
So they both made small errors that sort of canceled each other out in a way. You know, the corp lost a credit unnecessarily. The runner was going to lose that parasite either way. So there you have it. Still, the three brain damage probably doesn't have anything uh, to help with that. So the corp was a little bit low on money. I think he only had four or five. Uh, does a gila hands, draws some cards, and throws some out. Maybe he's throwing out Yaguras, which he doesn't need anymore. Or maybe he's throwing out shocks uh, to scare him off the archives. Or he could actually be dumping agendas, uh, like the future perfects. If one of those two uh, unrezzed cards is a Jackson Howard, that is a high possibility uh, that the future perfects would go into the trash. I don't think he ever plans to score them. Uh, he's just looking to sort of fill out the rest of the agenda um, you know, requirement as safely as possible with as few cards as possible. Mushin no Shin again. Okay, well, listen, if that's um, you know, a Cerebral and you run it, this could be game over. Um, you have two clone ships. You should have gotten Deus Ex already. So here's something that happens. Um, he uses SMC to get something. I think he forgot the Deus Ex is in the trash. So he's looking through his deck, and he's like, oh, what am I going to get? Uh, mm, um. He can realizes the Deus Ex isn't in there. But he's got to get something. So... Thinking about getting an Atman, I think he's considering setting it at 4 for the Eli. Uh, but I guess using one Data Sucker with Yag is just better. So in the end, he just gets another self-modifying code. Sort of a, a waste there. That's what, you know, you should check your archives first. Okay, now he's going to get the clone of the Deus Ex. Good. Good job. But it's not like Jinteki doesn't know that there's three clone ships available and a Deus Ex in the trash. He knows where the Deus Ex is at all times. Is he going to run? He's running. He's shown that he'll run the Mushin no Shin cards, and it's a Ronin. It's a good thing he ran that. Uh, otherwise, he would have lost to the Ronin. But you think, you know, maybe he would have been scared away from running it because of the Cerebral. If it was a Cerebral, it would have been game over, right? Is, is that enough to scare you away? So, um, he's going to run R&D here with third click, run R&D. And he thought about resing the pup, but decided against it because there's a Yog, so it's just a waste of a credit. A Ronin. Oh, he's Maker's Eyeing, actually. And it was Ronin, Ronin, House of Knives. So all the Ronins are gone. Uh, that's really putting a hurt on Jinteki, because when there's three brain damage, Ronin is a key to winning. Now, the runner knows for sure, 100%, there are no Ronins out there. So it's much more likely uh, to be a situation where you do not want to run uh, a remote that's advanced than a situation where you do want to. So Mushin no Shin. Okay, so... Since Ronins are all gone, the only reason you would want to run this is if you thought it was an agenda. Right now, the score is 1-1 one to one, uh, because the runner has a GQ that cancels out one agenda, one one-pointer, and has a two one-pointers scored. The Corp has one one-pointer. So letting him have an agenda, is it really a big deal? You know, that could... And he's going for it. He's shown that he'll go for it. Click two, Cerebral. Well... <laughs> uh, if you you know, there you go. You showed you were gonna run. You continued your pattern of running. You didn't you know you didn't change your mind when it was a Ronin. So it's a rebuild. Okay, you still didn't change your mind. Six brain damage, but because he drew a card before running, uh, he's not dead yet theoretically. He could if somehow score six points in two clicks uh, and win. So that is a snare. So that's game over right there. Boom. Uh, if he would have found two future perfects in two runs and won both side games. No, because even though he would have scored it, the net damage from scoring it would have killed him instantly. I guess he could have used a Deus Ex uh, to stay alive from that net damage. So, there you have it. Jinteki puts another flat line on the board.